If you can see us, welcome to another episode of the Caribbean Edge. My name is Dawn Wilson. <laughs> I'm gonna look to see that we are live, which I just did. My name is Cheryl Ann Marshall, and our special guest today is Dr. Hamilton. In the meantime, we're gonna share these so that everyone can join us exactly at eight o'clock. So just give us a couple minutes and we will be right back. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. 758. Do you want to take some time to share it on your page, Scotty? Mm -hmm. You can do that. I just shared it in the Caribbean Edge. I shared it in Sundown. I should share it on my page as well. Let me see if I can do that. And that way I can say what this episode is about. Where would I go now to find it? And, uh, I can help you find it. Just less than a minute to go, so definitely appreciate everyone that's logging in a little early and sharing us as well. Remember, you can share this episode on your page as well. Lots of educational information coming out tonight, so we want to have the open discussions with you. Remember, you can also make your comments. Um, we will obviously answer them if we can, or Dr. Hamilton will also answer any questions that you pose to him tonight as well. I love the sound of that. <laughs> Dr. Hamilton. <laughs> Dr. Hamilton. <laughs> I really do. I really do. We might slip up because we also know Scotty, <laughs> Dr. Scott Hamilton. Um, I hope I do. On the social scene as well. <laughs> And it's good that, you know, you know him professionally and personally as well. So a lot of the viewers tuning in also know um, Scott here, Dr. Hamilton as well. should be there now. Let me see if I can figure out your phone and see if you are actually, you can go on your page and see if you see us there. Okay, so mm -hmm. eight o'clock. Scotty, I miss you, bro. How are you doing? <laughs> Who was that? That was Khalif Harriet. Okay. Joan Virtue says hello, hello. Hello, hello, Joan. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in. I know you cut your gym short sometimes to tune in and watch us. So thank you. Magali is watching. Hi, Mags. Mm -hmm. All right. So we want to open up by talking about the weekend, right, Don? Oh, we had a beautiful, amazing, phenomenal weekend, and all three of us happened to be there. Mm -hmm. so, Where were we? <laughs> Does anybody know from all the posts we have made, <laughs> from all the interviews we have posted that we feel so blessed to be a yes. part of? So we mm -hmm. had the pleasure of teaming up with um, Vice Mayor Alexander Davis from the city of M Miramar, where she hosted uh, the first reggae month outside the shores of Jamaica. So South Florida, which is such a melting pot for Caribbean people, um, was here in full force to support the event. Um, and of course, the honoree himself, Mr. Freddie McGregor, was on point, so we were able to interview him. And um, he was such a humble guy. He took pictures with everyone, uh, spoke obviously to the Caribbean Edge. You can find our videos on YouTube as well as our Facebook pages. And um, tell us just, how you felt at was that great. event. Uh, we were just talking a while ago about which was or which is your favorite Freddie McGregor song. So I was saying, Born a Winner. Yeah. You know? And we were just playing it a while ago. And it was an excellent, excellent evening. Miramar represented well. Mm -hmm. The mayor, the vice mayor, council general, you know, Oliver did his thing. Freddie much of the place and he went up the road to do stuff with Third World. Mm -hmm for Bahamas really. So it was really a great night. 
Yeah, I know where I was at. I was just giving you my little friend. Right, it was a great night, and that is when we actually booked Scotty for this week, ladies and gentlemen, because um, I saw him come on as he entered the Icon Awards, and we've been meaning to get him on the show for quite some time now, and I took that opportunity to ask him, dude, are you free this coming Wednesday? <laughs> yeah, you guys are family, so anything, um, yeah. and the topic, you know, Black History Month, youth, um, is important to me. But we will get into that. Yes, we will. Um, so yeah, it's it's my pleasure to be here tonight. Thank you, and thank you for joining us. Um, you're a pillar in the community. So show any laugh at that. Yeah. And obviously, we all love your wife Sandy, who couldn't be here tonight. I, that was one of the questions I asked her: Is where Sandy is? She's home. So I'm sure she's tuning in to see her yeah, husband. Mom. She and Magali will be yeah, tuning in and Yomar. cheering you on. And, um, so just to give you guys a little bit of a background about Scotty, um, who is Dr. Hamilton. <laughs> he was originally from Kingston, Jamaica, went to Jamaica College and then did O-level and A-level exams at Titchfield High School. Yep, big up Titchfield. Yep. And then he played football at the University of Houston. Carl Lewis, Kirk Baptiste, Akik Olujewan, and Clyde Drexler were classmates. Yeah, so back in the 80s, wow. our basketball, football team wasn't so good, but the basketball team was, uh, went to the NCAA finals against Michael Jordan. Wow. So, not Carl, so Akeem Olujewan and Clyde Drexler, they didn't win in college, but they came back to Houston after and represented the Houston Rockets, and they won the NBA. For awesome. Twice. Awesome. Awesome. So Scotty got his PhD in clinical psychology and sports psychology. And then he became a director at the research at FIU. Then was promoted to the founding assistant dean in the College of Medicine at FIU. And Dr. Hamilton is also the president and CEO of Elite Sports Psychology. He has worked with gold, silver, and bronze medal Olympians, yeah. NBA World Champions, NCAA Champions, NFL Champions, and Hall of Fame Athletes. One of the quotes that he goes by, your best performance is between your ear. Yeah. I like it. The mind is a powerful thing to waste, I always say. Yeah. Exactly. I always say, I exactly. always say, and um, one of the one of the quotes that he also loves is, "Free your mind from mental slavery." slavery. By Bob Marley and Marcus, Marcus Garvey. Garvey. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So that's just to give you guys a little bit of an inside scoop on Dr. Hamilton. <laughs> so tell us a little bit about that quote. <laughs> all right. Um, so first of all, I I don't like wearing suits. So when it comes to the <laughs> so all uh, who know me now, I have worn suits since I was a dean in the College of Medicine or working in academia. I don't really like wearing suits, that means I must love the tone because I'm here in a suit. We feel the love. No. <laughs> we feel it. And our viewers feel the love. All right. Thank you. So um, I come into the court, my family, my father is, they're all lawyers and I, I didn't want to go into law because he was a big shot lawyer. He was the first public defender of Jamaica. And so, mental slavery, to go to the court, my sisters said, both of them are lawyers, and I call them before I come on here, because sometimes I can get passionate about the subject of Black History Month, um, or just black people in general. So they said, go on the thing, and speak as if grandma is sitting in a chair facing you. Good advice. So I'm not going to be burning fire and all kind of things for away for people. That's not what I'm up here to do today. But the mental slavery, uh, I want the young people, and especially, how I'm going to approach the subject of color tonight is God created us with different hues. 
So you have people, all three of us have a lot of melanin. Some people have less melanin. And that's it. The color of the blood is the same, you know? So some people have less melanin, some people have more melanin, and some people have even more melanin still. And part of what I'm going to talk about today is unfair treatment of people just because you have more melanin. So the mental slavery aspect of that quote, um, we've been enslaved even after slavery. And we're listening to certain things. Young people don't understand, truly don't understand their history. We've, we've learned a Western European history. Um, the richest man ever on planet Earth, and there's documented proof to this, is a man named, a king of Africa, Mansa Musa. And all the wealth he had, all the richest men to know wouldn't uh, uh, reach to what he had. And he would go around giving away gold. So I want young people that have a lot of melanin or more melanated to understand in this month that they call Black History Month, truly understand your history. Research, there's a lot of information out there. Research and know your history and don't just you know, take things for granted. Yeah. Don't be a mental slave. Okay, so you work with a lot of the youth. Um, can you give us some examples of when, when you have young adults that you're working with that have that mental slavery challenge, so to speak? Um, what are some of the, like an example, and then what are some of the methods or tools you use to encourage them to be firm within themselves and have their own empowerment. Okay. Have you seen a lot of it? Yes, yes, ah. yes. Wow. Um, I've been here for, well, in that long so yeah, I've been here for a minute. So, uh, first job was Liberty City, working for the past Grand Basilus or National President of a Fraternity. I'm very proud of Omega Sci Fi. You always see me taking pictures and doing this. Yes, yes. I, I pledged Omega Sci Fi in 1984 at the University of Houston. It was founded on November the 17th, 1911, at Howard University. To, to, to go to the question of, of these young people and understand, I spent my whole life, it's a good question, I spent my whole life really studying a particular area of the brain. It's called a limbic cortical region. It's there to protect us. You know, it's an emotional part of your brain. Um, you might, someone might like one slice of pizza, the limbic cortical region one, the whole box, you know? Mm. Someone might like one girl, the limbic cortical region like all girls. Mm. You follow? Mm -hmm. You have to manage it. Mm -hmm. So these young people, not understanding truly this region of the brain. And what the region of the brain does, it suggests things to you now. You don't have to listen all the time to the suggestion. You drink a lot of alcohol and it, it, your limbic cortical region says, so, boy, I should have stopped that boy then in the neck, you know. Can so it's your voices in your head. Yeah, this is, yeah. We, so we call it the chimp or the yes. monkey man. So the voices in your head, just like yes. the children. You, you don't have to listen to it. In right. China, they call it monkey mind. Other places, they call it other things. When you tap, my field, I I'm a clinical, licensed clinical um, psychologist in Jamaica, and here I practice sports psychology. And all I'm doing is trying to help athletes and young people to manage that yes. portion of your brain. Yes. You perform well if you manage it. Mm -hmm. It, there's a lot of people, my father was a criminal attorney till he became a public defender. There's a lot of people in jail, here, Jamaica, all over the world, because they're young, they're full of testosterone or whatever, and that region of the brain said, you should do this. So then it says to them, I should stab that man in the neck because he disrespect me. Mm -hmm. You stab the man in the neck, you spend the rest of your life in jail, mm -hmm. and you sit down in jail saying, why I stab him? Right. You understand? Right. It's that everything it suggests you have to do, you know? Right, wow. It suggests you eat the whole box of pizza. You eat a whole box of pizza, you get bigger. Like you can't eat up too. everything. You, sick. you understand? You don't have to. Oh. And then when you when you when you add the embalming fluid, when you add the alcohol, the, the limbic cortical region like that. Right. 
So it affects the, the prefrontal cortex, which will affect executive functioning. People, when they're not full of too much alcohol or too much drugs or something, generally act normal. Fill them up and they can, you know, do so, ridiculous things. So are you saying that I should stop drinking? No, 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 on the contrary. <laughs> Definitely not. But there's a time and place, you know? Right. I mean, right. I, right. I'm not even here. Kidding, kidding. I don't know, I'm not, I mean, <laughs> to promote anyone. Yes. You understand? Yes. Right. But if you look, somebody plans to do something bad to somebody and then drink a lot of alcohol. They might do it. Yes. Somebody plan to do something to somebody bad and them smoke a whole heap of weed. They might just stay in the couch and eat <laughs> a cake or <laughs> a, even go over to the person that toast. Yeah, eat or go over to the person and they plan to do something bad to and just reason with them. Yeah. There's not a lot of violent activity. I'm not condoning or promoting one or the other. Yeah. You understand? Yeah. But you're say even research now, weed has been marijuana has been shown to help people with um, all kinds of all kinds of ailments, ailments. ailments. yeah yeah to I mean you have you, all kinds of things yeah. so it's help in there you haven't really seen anywhere where you say alcohol is helping, helping. unless it's white rum which is <laughs> right, but you're doing white rum. Yeah, when you have cola, that's the only time. way my wife deal with the white rum is right. sop it up in your head. Right. Me, I, I will have it with some ice and. Uh -huh. <laughs> so, what are some of the challenges that you're finding as you speak through the years with our youth, whether it's Caribbean, American, international, just youth in general? Let's not. Um, link the alcohol or anything else to yeah. the weed anything right, right? It's just, just normal you have kids they may have grown up in a poor neighborhood poor environment may have been missing a dad missing mm -hmm. a mom in the household what are some of the common factors you're seeing and then we know there's so much information out there and who you get it from because if we don't have positive people around us that may explain something in a positive light or detailed. What you hear from each person mm -hmm. you interact with is different. Mm -hmm. So you have a lot of youth or uh, people that are angry based on either their upbringing, they were abused by a parent, mm -hmm. just the information they receive in, in their brain. What is some of the advice or methods or tools you're using to help defuse young kids, to help them focus and become the more, the better image of themselves. Okay. So, through my time with Dade County Public Schools and then years at FIU and other, because I was dean of another private university, you'll see situations where someone is brought up by just their mom. So it's a single mm -hmm. mom bringing up kids. Then you have situations where it's the grandparents or grandmother bringing up a kid. Then you have a situation where it's mother and father, right? And in each situation, I'm, you, you can't generalize, which is why I don't want to do the white people, black people conversation. I just say yeah. more melanin, less melanin. You have people that grew up with both parents and they equally have challenges. Mm -hmm. And you have a child that was raised by the grandmother and they are they, they're firing on all cylinders, doing very well. You have children brought up by single moms, they're doing well. And the adverse, you have single mom and the child is, you know, having difficulty because you have, in science we're talking about nature and nurture. So nature would be the environment. Nurture is just the parent. Mm -hmm. And the parent can be doing all it can be doing, but they're doing four jobs, three jobs, to just make sure the bills pay, roof over the house, you have clothes and food. So then it's the environment now is raised, which is nature. The environment is raising the child. And plus, you can have other things too, where say a child is affected. And this is genetically affected, whereby there's a chemical imbalance. And I'm not talking chemicals like the chemicals we are talking about a while mm -hmm. ago. There is more or less serotonin, less norepinephrine, so the child is... Uh, a proclivity to, to depression, 
Mm-hmm. Right, and it's not that they're trying; to, they, yeah. they, they're just they're just they're always sad. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But they are sad. And let me tell you, let me go back to that limbic cortical region. Mm-hmm. Like the kid the other day who committed suicide, the athlete who was about to, you know, yeah. could have, and then he took the mom's blanket and he stepped in front of the train. Mm-hmm. When that region, remember I said the limbic cortical region, all it does is make suggestions. If every morning you wake up, and as you wake up your brain says, hey, good, good to see you again. You know what you should do today? Kill yourself. Right. That's not an easy conversation to be listening to day in, day in, right. day. And I'm not, you, you need real, real help there. And then your, your question was, how do you help? Mm-hmm. You help them understand that the problems that they're looking at right now as a major problem. Mm-hmm. You give them that same problem at 30, and they laugh at the problem. Yeah. Girls are mo- they, they mature much faster than boys. Girls, females, ladies, girls, mm-hmm. your prefrontal cortex and your frontal lobe is fully developed at 21, mm-hmm. about that. Mm-hmm. Boys always take to about 25, mm-hmm. which is why boys stupid. I'm not sure if it's not so close. You're not <laughs> no, 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 we do some stupid things. You, you understand? <laughs> Which is why you see a girl like an older boy. Yes. Right? You see a girl in a freshman. Yes. And she's talking to a senior. Right. The two of them is on the same mental yes. level. Yes. Yes. Yeah. You understand? Without a doubt. Without a doubt. So when she's a senior, she definitely not talking to no freshman boy and they have nothing to say to her. Yeah. That makes no sense. That make any sense. So <laughs> that's true. It's true. I think young people watching this <laughs> will be educated on that. It's true. Yeah. It's true. If, My daughter yeah. cannot deal with she, yeah. she cannot deal with the with the guys who are her age it or younger. She and cannot. it's because of stages of development. Between zero and five, you're different from you are between five and ten. Mm-hmm. Between ten and fifteen you're different and then fifteen and twenty. So if this young person is and any of you young people out there if your brain is suggesting foolishness to your life you should hurt yourself or the world will be better off without you that is beer please foolishness don't. please don't do it right it's not it's not a video game god put you on the earth for a reason it's not you to decide when you should leave mm-hmm. yeah you shouldn't decide when you should leave and if you get to the point where you're old really old and you're like, all right, I can't take it no more. That's a different thing. Mm-hmm. But when you're young, the problems that caused you to think that way, you get the same problems. That's, it's like I say to them all the time, give the problem that you're, you're thinking of is a big problem, give it to any adult. Mm-hmm. You have kids that they're, uh, so your question was going around when I was in, working with the kids in school. They will hurt themselves, you know, or want to hurt themselves because Johnny said, go and beat me up when I come to school Monday. Yeah. Right. And spend the whole weekend yeah. planning Thinking to not be in here because Johnny go and beat me up Monday. Mm-hmm. When you come to school Monday, Johnny not even remember say, you don't have anything. Right. You know? And just the kids, young people out there, if you're listening, 95% of the things you're worrying about, let me say it again, 95% of the things you're worrying about will never happen. Have one. Right, that don't stop your limbic cortical region from Talking. ruminating and going over and perseverating on this. Mm-hmm. Right, so give it some time. Some of the things that you worried about when you were in middle school, they're not relevant now while you're in high school, mm-hmm. and they won't be relevant when you're in college. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you know, so great advice, great conversation. As I'm listening to it, it also applies to adults because there's a lot of times we think that we're under so much pressure whether it's for health whether it's for a job and you just you're in that situation and you have to remind yourself that this is temporary Mm -hmm. right it's it's not going to stay this way and i always like to think that when something bad is happening is it's happening for a reason you know there's a reason this is happening reason i didn't get this job because i'm going to get another job that's better than this job for my mental health and I, I think for the for the young people and any age group that's struggling you know what are some of the professional resources like they really need to go talk to oh, someone definitely. but sometimes you can't even talk to your parents no, no. right Somet- and sometimes because listen you, the, it's not so the parents don't know but they're not trained and i'm not saying you can't talk 
Talk to your kids' parents, really, and listen to them more than talking at them. Talking at them is talking at them. Mm -hmm. Understand where they are. This world is different from the world we grew up in, right? Everything they want to know, they can see it on their phone. There's a lot of information out there. They're seeing things. That they probably can't begin to yeah. understand yet. And yeah. the stages of development, the brain not... Yeah, not ready. So, not ready. Which is why I like how... Um, best thing happened to me in my life is I like a bow legged girl whose mother is from Portland who just passed away. So my wife's mother passed away two weeks ago. She went to Titchfield High School. So again, two times now I big it up. I don't big up JC yet. I don't ever big up JC. Big up Titchfield twice because they always say something to me. I always big up right. JC. I, I don't forget up. so. You're just trying <laughs> to so, avoid yeah. me. Yeah. Yeah. So God have a plan for you. Know? So he had a plan for me. My wife and I born May of 1962. We got married at 25 and when somebody is for you, you know, so the young men out there, stop treating the woman them in your life like garbage because you don't know if that woman is supposed to be the mother of your children. Mm -hmm. You understand? If you realize, if you could look into the future and she say she's supposed to be the mother of your children, you'd treat her better, right? My wife, I give her some love, she give me amazing children. I give her some food, she give me amazing meal. I buy her a house, she give me a home. My PhD is as much mine as it is hers. You see this picture, right? Or so? God created our skin tones with beautiful variety, but all of our souls are the same color. So my wife, mother, and me are the same melanin, same skin tone. Her father, less melanin, right? So it can't be said burning fire for all kind of, I worry for people and friends. And so I don't really like to try to the white people, black people conversation, or white people, brown people, Indian people. We're all different shades of brown. Mm -hmm. You understand? So, yeah. One so, of the questions I had for you in regards to black history, swinging it right back to black history, um, was what does it mean to you, part one, and part two, why are you so passionate about this subject? I, I like that question a lot. Mm -hmm. um, if some of you see my post, and that's why I went into that whole mm -hmm. different. Yeah, so why, why, am I, why am I passionate? I, I guess I wasn't this passionate when I was in Jamaica. Because in Jamaica, there's out of many one people and we really say we don't really have racism or mm -hmm. it's classism. You understand? Mm -hmm. You can have the most melanin, but if you have the money and whatever, you can be, you know? So I, I guess I was not as passionate. Then I came to University of Houston. And if you understand, University of Houston is in the third ward. So it is like Liberty City here in Miami. Yeah. And I tried to put down Houston, but yeah, it's downtown. Houston, mm -hmm. right? Then I pledged this fraternity, which was founded November the 17th, 1911 at Howard University. First black fraternity there. Then I became the president of the Black Student Union there. The mayor at the time was Kathy Whitman. The president of the university, we had a Black History Month celebration, and my frat brother, um, Reggie Jackson, came. And that thing, opened up my eyes to how we were, say it was 30 or 40,000 students at the school. I think we might have been three or 4,000 black students. But we were very popular, the, the sports teams were popular, and it opened up my eyes. Then I came here, my first job was Liberty City. Jesse Trice, it's now called Jesse Trice Family Health Center. And so the more I lived in America, the more I realized that less melanin in, in your skin, you can get preferential treatment. Mm -hmm. And I mean it this way. If, if you, you have 
really less, less, less melanin, you don't have this conversation with your children. When the police pull you over, mm -hmm. this is what you do. I have three children. All of my children, our, our, our documents, license, well, registration and insurance is up in the, the visor thing. Mm -hmm. So when the police pull you over, your hands are up. Right. And when you say license and registration, you just go to hand, pick it out, and you give it to them. And you keep your hands in the ear. Mm -hmm. Instead of having to go into the glove Do not go into no glove compartment because you'll get wow. shot. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So this, this, is, this is real. Mm -hmm. This is not something I'm imagining. I have no. these conversations yeah. when my children in call house late at night. Yeah. I fly out of the bed. Same here. We're very, very nervous. It Same. is not. It's not a joke thing. No. So when I when I wanted what I wanted to say and this why I'm passionate about it is my father was big first public defender in Jamaica's history and he would speak out about unfairness. Right. So Joaquin Phoenix said I'm gonna try to find the quote. Joaquin Phoenix when he won the Academy Award this couple of days ago, Sunday I think it is, he said, run to the, run rescue, to the rescue with, with love, love and, and peace will, will follow. follow. Exactly. And so, stay with me. And stay with me. I am, I am passionate about why Kaepernick kneels. I'm passionate about what Muhammad Ali spoke about. I'm passionate about what Kareem Abdul-Jabbar is speaking about. And what he's talking about is unfairness. Stevie Wonder has never seen nothing in his entire life. Stevie Wonder can see that people with a certain hue or more melanin than other people are treated differently in this country. There is preferential treatment if you have less. It's so the world run, mm -hmm. right? Some people, you have, you have people with a whole heap of melanin and, and them is foolishness too. Yeah. So I'm not saying, you yeah. understand? That's not what I'm talking about. Why I'm passionate about it is I have my father, this is, I'm my father's son, in, in bonfire in Jamaica. Bonfire just means we're not pleased with that situation. In bonfire for unfairness. Mm -hmm. So I bonfire for unfairness. Right. You understand? So that's why I'm passionate. Yeah. I, don't, I don't have no hate in my heart for nobody. Right. I just speak out about unfair treatment. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that unfair treatment could affect my children. And that. That is not an easy thing to swallow. Yeah. Yeah. Your children are your life. Well, yeah. 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 They have to learn how to stand up for their rights. They're they my rights to know, yeah. but it's a scary, scary place yeah. this is one. Yeah. You can you can you can get harmed here. You can get shot easy, easy, easy. Yeah. Yeah. In a easy. sense. Yeah. I remember being pulled over by the cops here and it was a horrible, horrible, right. horrible experience. And what I, I the, my first thought was, thank God it's, it was me mm -hmm. and not my kids. Mm -hmm. And I had the instinct to call 911 because that's what saved mm -hmm. me. I was in a dark road with one cop. He called for no backup and came to my window with a gun pulled. So when you're talking about this, it just resonates with me. And I call my children right away and said, this is what happened. This is what I did. Because you have to think quickly to protect yourself. All the people that know me, I'm going to talk about people who know me a long time, know of me driving. I have now met Sandy. So I used to be at university, I used to know from me, meet her. I'm no longer at university, I used to know. I leave Houston now, I come to Miami. So I'm driving from Houston to Miami in a Honda Civic. And I've got too much into the story. All people who know me know I was pulled over in a particular state. So if you check the states them from Houston to Miami, you'll get a good idea of which state I'm getting pulled over. And I call out my state name and bonfire up on no state. But there's certain places I'm not going again in America. Right. You follow me? Right. Don't need to not go in, not exactly. checking, not visiting, not vacating, not nothing. You're not gonna subject Maybe yourself to that. Yeah. Yeah. I'm that not happens. I'm not going. Mm -hmm. I'm very lucky that another officer pull up and wow. said to the other officer, What you doing? And wow. that officer said to me, Get in your car 
and don't drive to don't stop again till you reach Florida. Mm -hmm. wow. Right? So when you see my passionate, I'm just I don't like and fear. Mm -hmm. Right? And a lot of the fear, I mean the unfairness can come from not knowing enough. I know a heavily melanated man that speak to enough enough people of different organizations and get them to even change. I mean I talk about people in you know them organizations in the South. Mm -hmm. So yeah, unfair and and why you would just treat another set of people differently just because they of a different hue. Don't understand it. So so what would you what would you say is your legacy? Who are you and what do you represent? Who are you? Hmm. <laughs> what do you want our viewers to know about you? What do you represent first and foremost? What, what's your legacy? What's All right. I'm Gemini. Mm -hmm. So I know that bird sign thing. So you, get, you can get Dr. Hamilton or you can get Scotty. Mm -hmm. So I said I can bring Dr. Hamilton here. You know, there's no white room here, so you're not getting Scotty. <laughs> <laughs> we, we're going to have some white room after the show so we can get some Scotty. Yeah, <laughs> so, so the legacy or what I would want is I've, I've helped a lot of students, a lot of young people. A hundred and fifty students came through the program. So in nineteen I pledged in nineteen eighty four, right? Pledge of fraternity. Nineteen eighty five I met Dr. Ronald E. McNair. He was nineteen seventy six Omega Man of the Year. Right? The following year, January 28th, one minute and 13 seconds after takeoff, and I remember that quote of time based on my niece, Sky Jarrett, because she is a McNair fellow. However, one minute and 13 seconds after takeoff, he, along with seven other uh, astronauts, perished in the, the Challenger. So after that, 1987, the federal government created a program to afford first generation first generation financial aid eligible minority students the opportunity to do their PhD. Why can I say that so easily? I said it for eight years. Mm. Right? A hundred and fifty students came through when I was the director. I think we're at a hundred and thirty seven doctors now. I used to give the, 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 the students my business card and say write your name on the back of my card and put DR in front of your name. Give me back the card when you're a doctor. Mm. Last year, my wife and I were invited to one of one of our students, Dr. Craig. Yeah, Craig know who I'm talking about. We, were, we went to Craig's house and he just got his PhD. So, legacy is, is helping young people. Mm -hmm. um, I would be remiss if I don't talk about my private practice. I'm very happy to be the president and CEO of Elite Sports Psychology. Uh, I help a lot of athletes manage that region, which is the limbic cortical region. So, um, athletes, performers, anybody that have to perform under a pressure situation, that area of the brain can affect them. It's not easy to perform the way you do in practice, the way you need to do in a 100 meter final when the whole world watching you. Or 200 meter final or whatever, you know, NBA final. Or, so to be able to calm down what we call the chimp or the limbic cortical region, that's another thing that I guess I'd like to be remembered for mm -hmm. when this video airing later. I'm a grandchild and I'm watching it. Mm -hmm. um, what else? I love my family. I love my kids, them. I love my wife of 32 years. Yeah. Them things there. That's um, what. 
That's beautiful. <laughs> and we love Sandy too. We love you guys. It's always great. I'm trying to see if we have any comments on here. Um, any questions as we have to respond? Because then we'll just give our closing statements. Feel free to ask questions, even though we might come off air in a little bit. We will go in and respond to those as well. Magali, ask one question. Can you give suggestions to us parents, some lessons to teach our children on being black today? Okay. That's from Max. Max, all right. Magali? Yep, cool, Magali, give thanks. <laughs> so, and you see, being black today, or being heavily melanated today, or have more melanin than some other people, it's different. You have to look at the totality of history. If someone can show where, because you have had people, different races, that have conquered or ruled the world at certain points, you know? At some point it was Africa and the kings there. So how they treated people, you know? If anybody can show that they were very unfair to other races of people, bring that information. The young people need to know that yes, you have different times where different races, you know, were the dominant race, how you treated. The other races but you also need to be cognizant of your place you're not just descendants of slaves you're descendants of kings and queens mm -hmm. so this foolishness that they try to portray as history it's been proven that it's not completely right black kids are heavily melanated kids no our young people need to do their due diligence and truly study, study your history, read more. There's a lot of information out there, right? You can, you can truly understand where you are as a race and as a people, and then come together and try, you know, Uplift, uplift the program. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's what I would say to young black people now. Wonderful, Oliver Mayor. Thank you for tuning in. Well, yes, sir. <laughs> Consul General. <laughs> he mentioned the quote you started off with. <laughs> oh, Oliver said we were losing sound in, intermittently as well. I'm oh, surprised. Lord. I'm so sorry about that, guys. Um, Thank you everyone for tuning in. Joan, <laughs> Yvonne, Elizabeth, thank you so much for being here with us. Well, Sherilyn is looking at that. Any final um, closing thoughts for the viewers on uh, Black History Month, uh, Reggae Month? Well, Reggae Month, um, have to big up. Bob the Gray and the Minister, Sports and Culture and Gender. Amazing job. Big up the Council General again, Mayor of Miramar and Vice Mayor. That was an amazing program. That whole concept of Reggae Month, you know, it's, it's going to blow up. It's going to be very, very big. Um, we were talking before the show started on the power of music. Yes, we were. And music soothed the savage beast. Mm -hmm. So in tapping into the Black History Month and, and youth, know your culture, know the places that your parents come from, be it the Caribbean, wherever, know Africa, but also know music. Because you will learn a lot about yourself and your culture through music. So you can do that research too. Yeah. Music is good for us, good for everybody. 
And what I found is that what I learned when I was a young girl, mm -hmm. I wasn't really interested in <laughs> back then. So I find myself as I've gotten older you through the years. You weren't interested in what? School and stuff like oh. that, right? It, it was, a you know, you yeah, went to yeah. school for different reasons, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. You went to school because you had to go to school. Oh, you but, wasn't liking it. Yeah, I get yeah. you. I never used to like it either. But as you learn more, especially like with this show and you educate yourself more, I find like so much is shoved down your throat, so to speak, when you're little because you're trying to just learn and pass your test. Mm -hmm. But for now, as you get older and you're reading more and you're educating yourself more, you find that you have a, like you say, you're more mature actually mm -hmm. to absorb the information and use it. So what you're saying about educating yourself is so yeah. important. What you learned back then and the same information you learn now, you're interpreting a lot differently, Different, yeah. right? You're looking at it. Interpretation is everything. everything. It's so everything. Yeah. Look, when I was Crazy. young, that man that I looking up to a lot, public defender, my father, parents got divorced when I was 18. I remember being in the PhD program and my professors, one professor from Harvard would say, are you doing this to try to understand? Are you getting a PhD in clinical psychology to understand your parents' divorce? I said, I don't know, maybe. But I was very angry like a youth at eight, which mm -hmm. is why I spent like, my whole life studying this area of the brain. Mm -hmm. So I used to get, I went to like four prep schools in Jamaica, you know, Oxford, St. Richard's Prep, St. Andrew Prep, Morris name, a whole lot of prep school, and I keep getting in trouble. Wow. And then I go to high school, I get that. And then later now, when I'm at Titchfield and there, there are girls at the school, I don't want to look like an idiot. So I started to do a little better. Mm -hmm. And then the more, because people that went to school with me in Jamaica, the world them laughing and can't believe I'm a doctor. Right. <laughs> Not that God, so. I'm glad. Not that I'm God. glad though. But the more, the more you study and the more you learn, then maybe this is what the father wanted to do is help some young Other people. people and, of course. You know, because I was a trouble youth, I can help some trouble youth. Yes. And yeah, I definitely can relate to you, them not getting into trouble or making them limbic cortical reach and run them. Right. Then now, you, once you start to really appreciate education, then you look, just like you're saying, you're looking at things in a different light. Because mm -hmm. we've just been taking it that this is how it go. Right. And this, this history that we've been presented is so it go. Look at where we are in the world now, where states in America don't have no more Columbus Day. Mm -hmm. When we were growing up, is Columbus discover, and I be a foolish since that, mm -hmm. discover and be sorry. Very <laughs> foolishness. Bare, bare bare foolishness. foolishness. <laughs> <laughs> so your final thoughts, Miss Wilson. <laughs> um, that was my final, final thoughts. Thought. Is is just keeping myself educated. Yes. I like the point that you made with youth and the confidence level that we need to have. And you know, all parents go through something with their kids. Mm -hmm. And my daughter Jade has been on this show, and, and I use her often as an example. But in middle school, she was five nine, five foot nine. Wow. Um, so really tall, insecure with her height. Um, grew up in a normal, as normal as we can be, single mom household. Um, and there was nothing I could do to make her realize how beautiful and how phenomenal she was. I used to clip out model magazines, show them how t tall women mm -hmm. are setting trends and everything, but it didn't matter. It took like her friends telling her and mm -hmm. it took her growing into her confidence and realizing that was just a phase she was going through. And I'm sure she can look back at it now because she signed with Wilhelmina, mm -hmm. Florida and Wilhelmina, yeah. California. Yeah. So just to be that, that transition from a, a kid that didn't have the confidence and she's beautiful and amazing. You would never know someone like that could be could insecure. Have been insecure. So getting professional advice, which we didn't do, mm -hmm. we handled it as we knew best to do, which is trying to educate or told her every day how beautiful she was. So I totally agree that confidence for our youth and the transition to go through, they do need professional help. I, I'm all for that as well. Don, listen, I know we need to be wrapping up, but <laughs> what you were saying a while ago goes back to remember that when I was talking about somebody thinking of 
hurting themselves yeah. or they're depressed or they're low. Yeah. Right? She, she, okay, so she was in a low period because she's tall. But look at Jada now and yeah. she's, she's, I mean, she's beautiful. She's, she's phenomenal. She and my, same name, my daughter is Jada too. And the problem you think is a big problem at that Give yourself that Give same yourself problem ten years later and tell me if it's really yeah. that big a problem. Absolutely. And then you have these kids that will listen to that region of the brain, keep saying it, and then they, with their young, not fully developed prefrontal cortex, act on a suggestion that the choice. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So yes, you need you need to get help. I think we need to continue talking to them. I do that with my children all the time. Sometimes I get tired of talking and instilling that confidence in them um, and, and, and just showing them that you could understand what they might be going through. Just yeah. show them that you can relate to what they are going through. Like how you said, you were once there. Mm -hmm. We were all once there. Mm -hmm. So just remind them, yes, we were there and, and you will come out of this. Definitely. You will come out of this strong and beautiful and you will look back at it and realize it was just part of the process, basically. Yeah. It was just part of the process. So I want to close with the fact that it's Valentine's Day on Friday and um, I know for some they don't have a significant other but you have friends, you have family, give them that love, show them that love and show your children that love, show them that love, understanding and I think that will help them along the way, that will help them along the way. You're right because it's a tough time for single people. Yes. It Some is. single people, it Valentine's is. Day. It is. So we'll find love. Yes. Show Thank love. you so much, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, for being the best part of the Caribbean Edge. Thank you so much, Dr. Hamilton, for joining us quite today. Welcome. And yeah, um, <laughs> I, I want to I wanna reinstate that quote that you brought up from Mr. Phoenix. Mm -hmm. Run to the rescue with love and peace we'll will follow. follow. I liked it. I, I liked, liked it a, a lot. lot. Yeah. He's 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 very see. He's, it's a less melanated person, and that's very deep. When he yes. when he got the award in in England, he's he spoke up on behalf of the unfairness. Yes. And he's saying not even one, not even one melanated person is nominated. So yeah, um, he is a very deep, and this is what is happening. And he said, I was a scoundrel when I was younger. Yeah. We all did yes. stupid things when we were younger. Of course. You know? Of course. So, it, we're, we're going in the right direction. Yes, if we yeah. have more people uh -huh. just caring and being impassioned about and empathetic to others. Yeah. Absolutely. Thank you, Dr. Hunter. Quite <laughs> welcome. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in to another episode <laughs> of the Caribbean Edge. And we'll see you next week. We have two powerful guests coming on for the next two Wednesdays. So make sure you tune in. Thank you. Take care, everyone. Ciao for now. Mm. I never big up all the past. I'm tired. I'm tired school tired. I'm pin. I need a Titchfield pin. <laughs>